Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the theater at Frankfurt High School. We ask at this time to shut down all cell phones and wireless devices for they can interfere with the sound system. We would also like to remind you there is to be no food or beverages in the theater at any time. Please take all noisy and rowdy children to the lobby so it doesn't distract any actors or those around you. Now please sit back, relax, and enjoy this production of Bye Bye Birdie. I know that, sir. It's just think of the disastrous effects this might have on the morale of the American teenager. No, I'm not saying that the boy doesn't want to go into the army. It's just that... No, I'm not trying to... Well, it seems to me that... When? Two weeks from now? At the adduction center? He'll be there. Oh, Rose, thank God you've come. This is the end of Alma Hillou Music Corporation. Conrad Birdie's going into the army. And your faithful secretary is here by submitting her resignation. Huh. I just dropped in to say goodbye, Albert, darling. Lots of luck. Uh, no, Rose, you can't. Not today of all days. Uh, my pills. Where are my pills? The, the little white ones I take when I'm overwrought. I always lose them when I need them. And it's... Here? Uh, not so much. But break it in half. You're 33 years old, Albert. You can take a whole aspirin. I'm not 33. I'm a long ways from 33. I won't be 33 until tomorrow. Water. <coughs> it's no use, Albert. My mind's made up. I've been with Almelu eight years now, and as you well know, I've been a lot more than just a secretary to you. Rose, those were moments of madness. Well, between the moments of madness in the office, I've put in a good 90-hour week. And for what? 
A five dollar raise in 1954 and a bottle of Arpege last Christmas. Well, promise her anything but get her Arpege, eh, Rosie? Yeah, but not a sixteenth of an ounce. Besides, I want something more than that. Rose, if you're referring to anything of a more permanent nature between you and I, I'm just not ready for it. Plus, there are religious differences. Being from Spain is not a religion, Albert. Well, if it's a part of the company you're after, then the answer is no to that, too. Alme Lou is me, Mama, and Lou. And any changes to that would kill that beautiful woman who bore me. Nothing could kill your mother, Albert, except maybe a silver bullet. <sighs> and I'm not dropping old Lou, either. He loved you, Rose. I loved Lou, too. He was warm, he was loyal, he was lovable, but he died six years ago, and he was a wire-haired terrier. Anyhow, I don't want part of the company. This is something much more important. Rose, if you're trying to discuss what I think you're trying to discuss, I'm in no mood to discuss it. There's nothing to discuss, Albert. Conrad Birdie's going into the army. I've quit. All you can do is give up the business and go back to college and get your degree. Rose, I am up to my ears in debt. Conrad has a $50,000 guarantee that I can't pay, and I just took a severe overdose of aspirin. Albert, this might be your last chance. Are you listening to me, Albert? This is serious. He's going in the army is the best thing he could do. Now you're free to start to do what you wanted to. Albert, Albert, Albert. I remember how you told me I should trust you for a year. It would just be for a year, but it's eight years, Albert. Eight long years, Albert! It takes time to build a business, Rose! It was only a sideline, that's what you said. You just needed some money, that's what you said. You were going to college and get ahead. Instead of being a music business bum, you were going to NYU and become... Don't say it, Rosie! ...an English teacher. Rosie! And furthermore, he wrote poetry and in the NYU yearbook for 1952 under Albert Peterson's favorite piece of literature. You know what it says, little women. I'm ruined in show business. An English teacher, an English teacher, if only you'd been an English teacher, we'd have a little apartment in Queens. You'd get a summer vacation, and we would know what life means. A man who's got his masters is really someone. How proud I'd be if you had become one. It could have been such a wonderful life. I could have been Mrs. Peterson, Mrs. Albert Peterson, Mrs. Phi Beta Kappa Peterson, the English teacher's wife. It was goodbye, Geoffrey Chaucer. Hello, William Morris. Goodbye, NYU. Hello, Alme Lucas. When you wrote Conrad's first hit, Ugga Bugga Boo, then I knew that was it. You were through with English forever. How proud I'd be if you had become one. It could have been such a wonderful life. I could have been Mrs. Peterson, Mrs. Albert Peterson, Mrs. Phi Beta Kappa Peterson, the English teacher's wife. Rose, I'll make a deal with you. Stay with me, help me pay Conrad's guarantee, and as soon as I'm out of the red, I'll dissolve the company and go back to the academic life.
Albert, you're on. I mean, I'm sure it'll take a while, but by 1974 or 75, we'll finally have enough money to be able to get... What's that? Something that's going to push that date up a few years. Pick a name. What name? What are you talking about? Fine, I'll do it for you. McAfee. Kim McAfee. Age 15, President and Recording Secretary, Conrad Birdie Fan Club number 2748 of Sweet Apple, Ohio. Mary? Yes, can you get me Sweet Apple, Ohio? The number's capital 78820, and call me right back. Well, now wait a minute, what's going on here? Who's Kim, whatever her name is? Kim McAfee, Albert, is what's going to send you back to college with the greatest hit song this business has ever seen. It's called... One Last Kiss. Huh. Never heard of it. You haven't written it yet. But when you do, and when that one last kiss is from Conrad Birdie on his way into the big cold army for two long years, and when he gives that kiss to one of his fans, chosen at random from 1,200,000 screaming hysterical teenagers, well, Mr. Birdie will be the hottest soldier since Joan of Arc. Uh, I think I'm beginning to see it now, Rose. We cut the record here in New York. Take that greasy bongo-playing car thief down to Sweet Apple. I'll let him kiss the kid. And release the record. Albert, you'll make enough money to go back to college for the rest of your life. <laughs> it's perfect, Rose, and I promise you, after all this is settled, it'll be just the two of us in perfect bliss. I, I can teach English. Bliss. Kiss, hey, that rhymes. I wonder if anybody's ever used it before. Huh, what difference does it make? It'll be perfect for the song. Oh, one last kiss, it gives me so much bliss. An English teacher, an English teacher, someday he may be an English teacher. Yes, Mary? Well, surely every phone in Sweet Apple can't be busy. What's going on down there? Kim McAfee just got pinned to who? Whom? Never mind. Just keep trying and call me right back. Then we might have such a wonderful life. Then I might be Mrs. Peterson, Mrs. Albert Peterson, Mrs. Phi Beta Kappa Peterson, the English. Teacher's Hugo and Kim, did, did they, they really, really get pinned? Did, did she kiss him and cry? Did he pin the pin on? Or was he too shy? Well, I heard they got pinned. I was hoping they would. Now they're living at last. Going steady for good. Oh, Mr. Hankel, this is Harvey Johnson. Can I speak to Penelope? And is it true about Kim? Penelope? I just knew it somehow. About the prom? I must call her right up. Saturday? I can talk to you now. Go on city! Go on city! Go on city! It won't last. Not at all. She's too thin. He's too tall. Hello, Mrs. Miller. This is Harvey Johnson. Can I speak to Deborah Sue? Hiya, Hugo. Hi, you stupid. What you wanna go get? Pinned? Well, I heard they got pinned. I was hoping they would. Now they're living at last. Who would say for? Well, Mrs. Gar, finest charity, home from school yet. Well, I heard they got pinned. I was hoping they would. Now they're living at last. Well, I heard they 
they got pinned. Oh, yeah. I was hoping they would. Oh, now we're living at last. Going steady for good, going steady. Going steady, going steady, steady for good. Going steady, going steady, going steady, steady, steady for good. He's in love with Kim. Kim's in love with him. That's so nifty. Oh, thanks. That means a lot. Um, just so you know, Kim's my girl. <laughs> well, hey, ladies, I'm still single. Get bent. Wait for me, Hugo. Oh, well, hey there, ladies. What's up? We're on the phone. With who? Go away! <sighs> Kim McAfee, what do you mean you're resigning from the fan club? I mean, just because Hugo Peabody gave you his pen doesn't mean you have to retire from all social life. I mean, getting pinned is very important, but there are a few things more important than very important. The Conrad Brady fan club is one of them. I mean, where else can us girls gather to worship that glorious creature? You do realize what you'd be giving up, Kim. I'm sorry, Ursula, but my mind's made up. Of course I'll still play his records, but things like the Conrad Birdie Pledge and the Scream are past me now. You're giving up the Scream? You mean when Conrad Birdie is singing on the television, you're not gonna go, ah! Oh, Kim. Kim, dear, will you please get off the phone? I have some calls to make. All right. I'm sorry, girls, but I have to go. You'll explain everything to the others, won't you? I suppose I'll have to. Bye, Bye Kim. Bye. Wait, Kim, are you sure? I mean, really, are you absolutely sure? Positive. After all, I'm 15 years old now, and it's time I started to settle down. She's right. She needs to settle down. Why? When you're a skinny child of 14 wide with braces from ear to ear, you doubt that you will ever be appealing. Then hallelujah, you're 15 and the braces disappear and your skin is smooth and clear. And you have that happy grown-up female feeling How lovely to be a woman The wait was well worthwhile How lovely to wear mascara And smile a woman's smile to have a figure that's round instead of flat Whenever you hear boys whistle You're what they're whistling at It's wonderful to feel The things a woman feels It gives you such a glow Just to know You're wearing lipstick and heels how lovely to be a woman and have one job to do to pick out a boy and train him and then when you are through you've made him the man you want him to be life's lovely when you're a woman like me how wonderful to know Wait for a date in 
simply beautiful clothes how lovely to be a woman and change from boys to men to go to a fancy nightclub and stay out after ten how lovely to be so grown up and free life's lovely when you're a woman like me You have a call. Coming. The operator says she's been trying to get through for nearly three quarters of an hour. Thank you, Doris. She said it was long. What did you just say? I said, thank you, Doris. <laughs> There's no need to look so upset. It's modern to call a mother by their first name. It makes the mother and daughters more like pals. What about your father? Well, I'll call him Harry, naturally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, ha, ha, ha. By the way, I think Harry took the news about Hugo and I awfully well. Don't you, Doris? Yes, this is she. I'll wait. Well, I don't know. Yesterday, I was a mother, and today I'm a pal. Are you sure you wouldn't like to call me mom? I mean, that's modern. I'm sorry, but times are changing, and you're just gonna have to go along with them or be left behind with the old folks. The old folks. Also, do you have a cigarette? I seem to have run out. <sighs> I'm not that old. I was only 18 in World War II. Yeah, he's a young one. Uh-huh. Yes? Conrad Birdie is coming here to kiss me? Doris? Mother? Mommy, 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 mommy! Ah, mommy, mommy, mommy! Come sit down. Okay. Conrad Birdie is coming here to kiss me. That's nice, dear. Just put your head on mommy's shoulder. No, you don't understand. Conrad Birdie is coming here to kiss me goodbye. Oh, mommy, mommy, mommy! Oh, I never thought I'd say it, but God bless Conrad Birdie. Off pitch on the Hi, girls. Sorry I'm late. Uh, shall we go over the birdie song once more before we head on down to track 12? Uh, little girl, remember the Conrad Creed. No smoking until you're 14. All right, shall we try it? Uh, oh, little girl, you can sing with us if you want to. What's the matter with her? Oh, she's just sad because Conrad Birdie's going to Army, and when he gets out, she'll be too old. Uh, well, surely she still has a few good years left. Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, you girls go ahead and head down to the track 12, and I'll try and talk to her. Hmm. Oh, and stay out of the bar! Hi, I'm Albert Peterson, Conrad Birdie's manager. Oh, come on, things can't be that black. Why don't you smile? 
Now, little girl, this is an adult speaking, and I already got a smile. Please? Gray skies are gonna clear up, put on a happy face. Brush off the clouds and cheer up, put on a happy face. Take off the gloomy mask, tragedy, it's not your style. You'll look so good that you'll be glad it is sighted to smile. Pick out a pleasant outlook, stick out that noble chin. Wipe off that full of doubt look, slap on a happy grin. And spread sunshine all over the place, just put on a happy face. Put on a happy face. Put on a happy face. And if you're feeling crossed and beakerish, don't sit and whine. Think of banana splits and licorice and you'll feel fine. I knew a girl so gloomy, she wouldn't laugh or sing. She wouldn't listen to me. Now she's a mean old thing. So spread sunshine all over the place. Just put on a happy face. Just put on a happy face. Just put on a happy face. Oh, there's our luggage. Little girl, you better hurry up and down to track 12 if you want to see Conrad before he leaves. Oh, and boy, could you get that luggage down to d d Rosie? What are you doing here? Getting our things down to the station without well, any help from you, Albert. I'm sorry, Rose. I don't suppose a generous tip would make any difference. The Just take the briefcase and go down to that train before any of those reporters catch Conrad alone. You know what happened last time. Actually, uh, you hold on to it, Rose. I've got to wait for Mama. Speaking of your mother, Albert, have you told her about dissolving Al Melu? Well, I couldn't, Rose. Yesterday was the anniversary. Of what? Lou! Six years ago, he died on the, on the corner of 181st Street and Broadway by a loaded beer truck. Yoo-hoo! Do you suppose that's Mama? It's either her or the all-clear. Yoo-hoo! Sonny. Oh, Mama. Uh, Catch me. Oh, Mama. Mama, what, what's the matter? Oh, don't worry about me, Sonny. Just a little faint from the subway, that's all. Mama, I told you to take a taxi. Taxi? What does a mother need with a taxi? A mother can handle a dirty, crowded subway full of foreign people who wouldn't give up their seat if their life depended on it. Here's the money I saved for not taking a taxi. Buy some candy with it. Who's she? Uh, Mama, you know Miss Alvarez from the office? This? Is Rose Alvarez? Pretty little Rose Alvarez? <laughs> What's the matter with your face? You have a sudden shock or something? What's the matter with the face? Well, Mama, I... Excuse me, Albert. I think I'll go see if Conrad's here yet. <laughs> you do that, Miss Alvarez. Look at her, Sonny. Look how nice she looks. It's a wonder some older man doesn't snatch her off. A real personable matron. That with some brains and a few dollars. You'd be a real catch for a convalescent. Goodbye, Rose. Goodbye, May. Call me Mrs. Peterson. Uh, now, Mama, what I wanted to talk to you about kind of involves Rose. Uh, maybe you ought to sit down. Why? I know my sonny. He loves his mama. He wouldn't do anything that would break her heart. Well, it also involves Lou. Oh, Lou! Where are you, Lou, struck down by a beverage I consumed faithfully for 32 years? What about Lou? Uh, well, Mama, it's just that Rose thought, and I agree, that maybe the best thing to do would be to dissolve the cup. But, Mama, what's the matter? Nothing's the matter. You killed me, that's all. Lou, I'm coming. I'm on my way up. <laughs> Uh, no, no, ma Mama, it's, it's just that, it's just that Rose thought, I mean, 
I mean, I thought, I mean, oh, Mama, just get up. And, oh, you know, now, here's some money. Buy a taxi. The subways are too crowded. Nothing's too crowded for a mother. I can take the D train. That's the worst subway. Wait, how many blocks is it after all? Only 107? I'll walk. Mama. Take care of yourself, Sonny. Wear your heavy raincoat, keep your money on your inside pocket, eat a hot lunch, and wear your rubbers. Wow. Skinny line. <laughs> Albert, I thought you were going to break it to her gently. <laughs> well, actually, Rose, I didn't tell her at all. But she was so upset about my leaving, I thought I figured I'd better wait. You mean he's that coming, you did He's coming! Did. He's coming! Well, later, Rose! We can't let Conrad talk to those reporters alone! Albert, you promised me! Later! Conrad needs me! <laughs> how does he feel? How does he feel? You ask how he feels, he's much too shy to tell you, so I'll tell you how he feels. He feels brave and eager, strangely humble, proud to be a plain GI. <laughs> he will gladly face those bullets, for he's not afraid to die. For he's a fine, outstanding, patriotic, healthy, normal American boy. That's why he volunteered for the armed fo- Sing! We love you, Conrad. Oh, yes, we do. We love you, Conrad. And we'll be true. When you're not near us, we're blue. Oh, Conrad, we love you. Uh, very nice. <laughs> Is he engaged? Is Conrad engaged? There's absolutely nothing to the rumor he's engaged. She's a real pal, like a sister, but it doesn't mean a thing. And the 18 carat diamond, well, it was just a friendship ring. For he's a fine, outstanding, patriotic, healthy, normal American boy. Oh, excellent question, and ah. Uh, Sing! We love you, Conrad. Oh, yes, we do. We love you, Conrad. And we'll be true. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll never forget Conrad's first words when he found out he'd been accepted in the armed forces. Gee, Mr. Peterson, he cried eagerly. Do you think they'll assign me to those frontline trenches? That way I'll be sure to get myself one of those dirty Jerry's. Albert! Or whoever's dirty this time. Give us the real scoop, Mr. Peterson. Is Conrad still drinking a lot? <gasps> now listen here. This gossip must stop. He goes to church each Sunday and he doesn't touch a drop. He's as decent as a minister. Absolutely. He's as sober as a judge. He subscribes to every charity and his hobby's making fudge. For he's a fine, outstanding, patriotic, healthy, normal American boy. Is it true you found that, that is a lie, a lie, lie through and through. through. I'll, I'll tell you where he came from. Here's the story, and, and it's true. true. He was born in Indochina. He was born in Old Virginia. Son of missionaries there. On a thousand acre farm. Very poor and very hard. From a line of wealthy planters. What a cruel life to bear. Filled with genteel southern charm. Then he drifted down to Hong Every Kong. Every evening by the river. To a waterfront saloon. By the moonlight they would croon. That is where I heard him singing. That's where Conrad started singing. Neath that dirty Neat Hong Kong the old plantation moon. Modest, patriotic, healthy, normal 
You sure are one hot mama, you know that? <laughs> Gosh, you really think so? Heck yeah. When I see you, my heart goes ape. You mean the world to me, Harvey? No kidding? There's nothing in the world that will ever tear us apart. Hey, Penelope, what you doing over there? Minding your own business, you should try it. Aren't you gonna be at the train station when Conrad Birdie arrives? He doesn't come for another hour. The word is the train's getting early. What? He's supposed to kiss Kim McAfee. Whoa, that's Hugo's girl. So what? It's Conrad Birdie, come on, let's go. Wait, I thought you said nothing would tear us apart. This is not nothing. It's Conrad Birdie! Ah! Wait till Hugo hears about this. Conrad Birdie, welcome to Sweet Apple. Now, before we escort you to the town hall where the mayor himself is waiting, I would like to introduce you to the girl upon who you've chosen to bestow your final kiss upon and who will now lead us in the reciting of the Conrad Birdie Pledge, Kim McAfee. Kim, the pledge. I, I Kim Ursula, McAfee, being, being of sound mind and body, do hereby promise to be loyal, courteous, steadfast, and true to Conrad Birdie and the United States of America, both indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Rose, you stay here. I'm gonna go with Conrad. But Albert! Uh, there's no time. Just take our bags, stack them, pack them, and take them to the house. If I see a taxi, I'll send it back for you. Boy, he's a fine, upstanding... Uh, hey, Kim. Before you go, can I talk to you for a minute? Right now? Yes, right now. Like Give right. me a second. Couldn't it wait? I'm in an awful hurry. I don't think so, Kim. It's important. Hugo Peabody. What is so important that you have to talk to her right now? What's so important? I'll tell you what's so important. The day after I give her my pin, she goes around and kisses another boy. Uh. That's what's so important. I want you to know I'm quite upset about this. I already had several headaches and a nosebleed. Why, Hugo Peabody, are you actually jealous of Conrad Perry? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not jealous. I'm the opposite of jealous. I'm very jealous. <laughs> but I have every right to be. Kim's my steady. That's just it, Hugo. I'm your steady. Oh, I may admire Conrad Birdie as one admires a far distant and unattainable ideal, but I'm pinned to you, Hugo, and I don't care how common and ordinary you are. That's how I'm going to stay. You're not just saying that to make me feel better? No, no, Hugo. I mean every word of it. Conrad Birdie is just a fling. A steady is forever. One boy, one special boy, one boy to be with, to talk with, and walk with. One boy, that's the way it should be. That's the way it should be. public figure, but he doesn't make me feel all dizzy and faint whenever I think of him. Only my study mm -hmm. does that. Why, even when I say his name, I don't feel a thing. Listen, Conrad Birdie, Conrad Birdie, 
Conrad Birdie. <laughs> One boy, one steady boy, one boy to be with forever and ever. One boy, that's the way it should be. That's the way it should be. Diane, wait. Whoa. The boy that she loves is the boy who makes her dizzy and, and almost faint. And you hear that, lady? That boy is me! Yes! 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 One day you'll find out This is what life is all about special guy, one guy to live for, to care for, be there for. Rose, what are you doing? I was just thinking of you, Albert. Just thinking of me? Never mind that. My speech. Where's my speech? It's in the briefcase. Well, bring it along. The mayor's almost finished speaking. One guy, that's the way it should be. from Conrad. Speak to us, oh beautiful one. Tell us how you make that glorious sound that even now in anticipation reduces me to nothing but a snarling, raging, panting jungle beast. Roar! Oh. You gotta be sincere. You gotta be sincere you gotta feel it here cause if you feel it here well then you're gonna be honestly sincere if what you feel is true really feel it you Write this down now, you. Write this down now, you. Gotta be sincere, honestly sincere. Man, you gotta be sincere. If you're really sincere, if you're really sincere, then you feel it in here. Then it's gotta be right, oh baby! Oh honey, hug me, ah suffer. In everything I do, my sincerity shows through. I look you in the eye, don't even have to try, it's automatic, I'm sincere. When I sing about a tree, I really feel that tree. 
When I sing about a girl, I really feel that girl. I mean, I really feel sincere. If you're really sincere. Then you feel it in here Then it's gotta be right Oh baby! Ah! Oh honey! Ah! Hug me! Ah! Ah, suffer! You gotta be sincere Oh 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 You gotta feel it here Oh oh my baby Well, you're gonna be sincere. 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 Oh, my baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, my baby. Oh, yeah. Well, you're gonna be sincere. Well, you're gonna be sincere. Have you gotten a chance to meet Conrad yet? No. I don't even know what I'd say to him. Well, how about having this time in the army? <laughs> but I don't think they do. Oh, well, then what would you say? I don't know. Oh, I know exactly what I'd say. <sighs> bye bye, birdie. I'm gonna miss you so. Bye bye, birdie. Why'd you have to go? No more sunshine. It's followed you away. I'll cry, birdie, till you're home to stay. I'll miss the way you smile, as though it's just for me. To go. I gotta get going too. Bye, guys. <laughs> Will you do the dishes, please? Yes, Mother. Thank you. Daddy, I really wish you would hurry so I could get this mess cleaned up before Conrad comes out. This mess, as you call it, Kim, happens to be my breakfast, and I intend to enjoy it. Kim, your father has a right to enjoy his eggs, but I'm sure he won't mind if we just quietly start clearing away some of these other things. 
I know the house has been a bit hectic this morning, dear, but Kim has gone through a lot of trouble to make a special breakfast for Mr. Birdie, and I intend to have everything ready and waiting for him when he comes down. I mean, he is a national figure, and I want to show these New York people that we know how to treat a national figure here in Sweet Apple. I mean, it doesn't really mean much to me, but for Kim's sake, there we go. All done? Did you enjoy it, dear? Good. Now, if you'll just get hurrying along. Doris, I am not budging from this room until I've read my paper and have my coffee. Uh, I'm sorry, dear. I didn't have time to make your coffee this morning. But, um, um, how about a nice warm Coca-Cola? <laughs> hey, Pa, here's your paper. I hope you don't mind I cut out a couple of stories about Conrad. <laughs> I have tried my best to run this house on a democratic basis. I have extended the privilege of self-determination to both the women I have married and the children I have sired. And no one has been denied the vote because of age, sex, or political affiliations. There has been no taxation without representation, and all open covenants have been openly arrived at. Last night I gave up my room to a guest who repeatedly referred to me as fats. Telephone calls were made from New York, Chicago, Fairbanks, Alaska, and Hong Kong. I slept in a camp cot with my feet in the fireplace and my head in the ashtray. Outside my window, three harpies shrieked, We love you, Conrad, oh yes we do. 4,723 times. I have just lost two fried eggs. Gentlemen, uh, the democracy is over. Parliament has been dissolved, the Magna Carta revoked, and Nero is back in town. And you do not offer an emperor a warm Coca-Cola. Uh, hey, Nero, uh, do you mind staying off the phone for a couple minutes? We're expecting a long-distance call from New York. Cool, thanks. Perfectly all right. I'll go out and burn Rome. <laughs> Dear. Mother, what's wrong with him? Oh, nothing, dear. Your father's just excited about Conrad's being here. That's all. He's coming! He's coming! Ah! Oh my goodness! Uh, Conrad's coming! You get the girls, I'll get the eggs. Girls! He's coming! You better hurry if you want to watch me! Ah! We're here! Where is he? Oh, I can smell him. Where is he? Oh, hi, Kim. I'm sorry, Doris. I just had to come to. Come right in. Thank Here you. he is! Call me for lunch. <laughs> Hiya, Fats! <laughs> now look here, Doris. About that boy. Oh, please, Harry. He's just shy. Well, if you ask me. And no one did. After all, Kim is only 15. I don't really uh, want her to. Please, son. Daddy, not in front of everyone. First of all, we'd better go. I don't care who's here. No ill-mannered loud is going to... Tell him, Pa. Huh? You shut up. Uh, Harry! You have no right to say that. The boy here is our guest. Now, this is my house. And until you're 18... But Daddy... You shut up. And until you're 18... But Daddy... Oh, will you leave me alone? Uh, Mr. and Mrs. McAfee, a Kim Randolph. Is this really how you want to be seen in front of 75 million Americans? And what are you talking about? Well, you're all going to be on television with, with Conrad. On television? On television? I just got the confirmation call from New York. 
from Mr. Ed Sullivan himself. Ed Sullivan? You mean we're gonna be on the Sullivan Show? The Ed Sullivan Show. Uh, that's right, they're gonna cut in this Sunday at 8.05. You're all gonna be on. That's why I'm begging you to please put aside all petty differences to that great American audience out there. You're an American dream come true. And for the free world's sake, Mr. McAfee, don't let that dream die. Me on the Ed Sullivan Show. Ed Sullivan. Me, Harry McAfee, appearing with Ed Sullivan. Ed, Ed, Ed Sullivan. Ed, Ed Sullivan. Ed Sullivan. Ed Sullivan. Ed Sullivan, we're gonna be on Ed Sullivan. How could any family be half as fortunate as we? We'll be coast to coast with our favorite home. got a wonderful wife, two small kids, a good job, and now this. <laughs> Someday we'll recall the greatest day of all. Ed, I love you. Ed What do you think? It uh, looks wonderful, Rose. Now, there's something I've been meaning of to... Of course, it's been a movie house for the past 30 years, but I think it should be just fine for the TV show. It'll be perfect. Now, what I want to... And they're shipping down the cameras and lights today, and whatever costumes we need, we can probably just get them from that place Rose, down the... Rose, everything will be great. Now, if you could stop worrying about the Ed Sullivan show for one minute and listen, there's something I want to talk to you about. About you and I, Rose. You and me, English teacher. Rose, I'm serious. I just wanted to let you know that I'm glad we got out of New York. Being out here has made me see all kinds of things in a new light, and that's why I decided, I wrote Mama and told her, no matter what happens, I've decided to give up Al Lou. Albert, you didn't! I did, Rose, and I wrote her the day we left, which gives her three days and three nights for her to get in contact with me, and so far, not a word. If you ask me, she's given up the, given up the whole thing by now. It doesn't sound like her. <laughs> Come in! <laughs> three days and three oh. nights! On a trailways bus. Oh. But what's the difference? A mother's lower than dirt nowadays anyway. Well, Mama, what are you doing here? It's... Me? Oh. What am I doing here? Move! <laughs> Her mother gets a letter. Obviously written under the influence of drugs. And she should stay home. <laughs> Pay no attention. It's only a mother's tears. Dear May, I am hereby dissolving Al May Lou, your friend, Albert. You're dissolving Al May Lou. <laughs> Dissolve me! What am I, a sick old woman who probably won't even last the night? 
And I only want one word on my headstone. Albert's mother. And don't hire a limousine to take me to my final resting place. I'll walk. Mama. And tell that Spanish friend of yours I forgive her. She knoweth not what she doneth. Uh, Mama, Rose is right here. This is Rose. She looks like Quasimodo out on the streets. For God's sakes, put her back in the tower. <clears throat> Hey, don't worry about a secretary. I found a wonderful one on the subway. A nice, refined girl. Sonny, say hello to Gloria Rasputin. Hi, Al. Hey, you're cute. Oh, uh, well, the... Uh, Mama, I don't need a secretary. I... I... I have... R Rosie. What does Rosie need a job for? In a, look at those crow's feet. In a year or two, she'll be getting social security. Well, listen, I do more than just type. Uh, you do other things? Oh, yeah, I do other things. Like what? I tap dance. <laughs> I figured I could help you with the secretary stuff, and then you would help me get into the show business. <laughs> hold this, honey. And you hold... This. May, can you hum Swanee? It's my favorite selection. Get a load of this, Al. <laughs> Bravo! Bravo! Well, do I get the job? Uh, well, I mean, you certainly have uh, wonderful qualifications, but uh, I'm used to working with Mrs. Alvarez. Uh, however, as you say, Mama, we are faced with a certain amount of extra work. And, uh, do you have to stay down there? Oh, just for a few minutes. Uh, May, help me up, will you? Al, you push from the other side. Uh, sure. Sonny, in the movies, they can always cut away while they jack her up. And why don't you take Gloria somewhere and see how fast she types? She's real fast. Oh, well, I mean, we do have all these releases to get out, and I guess Gloria could do them, unless it makes any difference to you, Rose. Why should it make any difference to me, Albert? Uh, a girl, Rose. Now, you just keep on uh, working over there, and I'll go along with Mrs. Rasputin. And I'll find you a typewriter. Oh. Well, now, do you use the touch system? Whenever possible. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I could kill him. I could just kill him. Uh, excuse me, Miss Alvarez? I'm looking for Kim McAfee. I just want to let her know that she is not to kiss Conrad Birdie on that Sullivan show tonight, because if she does, uh, Miss Alvarez? Miss Alvarez, it's, it's me, Hugo Peabody! Can I do anything for you, Miss Alvarez? Yes, Hugo, I think you can. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, live from New York, The Ed Sullivan Show. And now, another great treat, Conrad Birdie. Yeah! One last kiss, oh give me one last kiss It never felt like this, no never felt like this You know I need your love Oh, 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 give me one last kiss Oh, one more time, oh, give me one last kiss It never felt like this, no never felt like this You know I need your love Oh, 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 give me one last kiss One last kiss. Maybe give me one last kiss. Oh, one last kiss. Oh, give me one last kiss. It never felt like this. No, never felt like this. You know I need your love. Oh, 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 give me one last kiss. 
Oh, one more time, oh baby, one more time It really is sublime, oh honey, so sublime You know I need your love Oh, 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 give me one last kiss One last kiss, oh give me one last kiss It never felt like this, no never felt like this You know I need your love Oh, 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 give me one last kiss One last kiss, oh give me one last kiss One last kiss, one last kiss Oh give me one last kiss yourself Conrad Birdie! Oh. <laughs> for this, uh, but who let that kid in here? I did, Albert. Oh, Rosie? Just considered a farewell present to you and Miss Rasputin. Wear it in good health. Oh, no, Rosie, wait! You, you can't leave me alone! Oh, you're not alone, Albert. You're on television. Ah, uh, or oh, he's a fine upstanding Patriotic, healthy, normal American boy for the fine standing. American
that's how long I've wasted on him. That's all I'm through. Albert, dear, to put it sweetly, I'm done with you. That's right, I'm done with you. From now on, it's just gonna be me, Rosie, out on the town, dancing, singing, having a ball, making up for eight years of being in love with a mama clutching, aspirin splitting, six foot tower of jello. What did I ever see in him? How did I ever get involved that way? Now that it's over, I can smile and say, what did I ever see in him? Boy, I was way out on a limb. Now that I'm safely on the ground again, now that my senses have been found again, what did I ever see in him? Is he tender? No, he's not. Is he thoughtful? No, he's not. Am I crazy? What's he got that you found so darn appealing? What did he ever do for me? Well, to be honest, he was sometimes nice. But still, it wasn't worth that awful price. It was rough from the start. Broken dates, broken nails, broken heart. How did I ever? Why did I ever? What did I ever? Don't be upset, Miss Alvarez. All men can't be like that. Every one of them! Except maybe Albert Schweitzer. Mm. But I'm not his type. They're all the same, from puberty to senility, from Arnold to Mussolini. I never really understood why Ingrid Bergman married him in the first place. Egotistical, selfish human beasts. Well, then what are we poor women to do, Miss Alvarez? Use them. Let them be our playthings while we live. Sip from the cup of life. Mix the potion full strong and drain it to the dregs. How do you like them apples, Mr. Peterson? Yeah. Do we need them? No, we don't. Do, do we want, want them? them? No, we don't. Will we leave them? No, we won't. Tell me what did I say that for. What did we ever see in them? How could we ever think that they were nice? Take it from us, we paid an awful price. It was rough from the start. Broken dates, broken nails, broken heart. What did we ever see in them? Hugo F. Peabody. Huh? Well, what did I ever see in him? Why, he's as bad as Mr. Peterson, if not worse. Miss Alvarez, I'm coming with you. Kim, don't be ridiculous. You're 15 years old. Julia was 14 when she left home. And look what happened to her. Eh? Look, why don't you just go downstairs and get some milk and cookies? It and is go to too late for cookies, Miss Alvarez. I want to live. We can sip the dregs together. We can help each other with our potions. For the last time, Albert, I'm okay, and I don't feel like getting into bed. Now leave me alone. Well, Conrad, you've just had a severe shock, and the best thing for you to do would be get into the back room and... Ah! There she is, the lady that stabbed me in the heart when my back was turned. Get out of my way, Albert. Careful, Sonny, she may be on. Oh, I can handle her, Mama. You just get to the back room and see to it that Conrad gets into bed. Wait for me, Conrad. I'll make you a nice hot cup of Ovaltine. For the last time, Albert, let me by. I'm going out on the town tonight, and I don't want to waste a minute. <laughs> Not until I've had my say, Rose. I just wanted to let you know that, thanks to Mama's quick thinking, the kiss will take place after all. <laughs> At the train station, right before he leaves. Well, it looks like you failed, Rose. As anyone must fail who tries to buck out Peterson. One of the giants, one of the titans, one of the King Kongs of the music industry. What did I ever see in him? How could I ever think that he was nice? Take it from me, I paid an awful price. It was rough from the start. Broken dates, broken nails, broken heart. An empire builder! Oh, God! Get out of my way, you defrocked English teacher! Ow! What did I ever see? Rose! 
Rose, get back here! Rose! Hello! Hello, Rose! This is this is King Kong calling! Rose! Come back! Rose, I I need you. Oh, and I don't care how much you plead and beg, Miss Alvarez! You're through here at Almelu! Not only do I accept your resignation, but furthermore, you're fired! And, and sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me! You, you big rat! Oh, sorry I had to do that in front of you folks. Uh, fortunately, I've had to let Miss Alvarez go, but uh, don't answer the phone if it rings. I'm expecting a long distance call. Probably Hong Kong again. Miss Alvarez, wait! I'm coming with you! And where do you think you're going, young lady? With Miss Alvarez to sip forth the brimming cup and just live! To live! Upstairs. Uh, but, Daddy. Upstairs. Did you hear me? I said upstairs. Miss Alvarez was right. You're all the same, from puberty to Mussolini. What's that? You dare say puberty in front of your own father? Not to mention Mussolini. Oh, Doris, we failed as parents. I never asked for, mu for much from my children. Just respect. A little respect. That's all I asked for. Respect. But did I get respect? No. I got no respect. I respect you, Pa. You shut up. <laughs> I don't want your respect. You're a child. What good is respect from a child? Oh, Doris, I gotta sit down. I'm not a well man. Certain words I didn't want to hear in this house. Puberty was the first. Mussolini was the second. And respect was the third. Kids, I don't know what's wrong with these kids today. Kids, who can understand anything they say? Kids, they are disobedient, disrespectful oafs. Noisy, crazy, sloppy, lazy loafers. And while we're on the subject, kids, you can talk and talk till your face is blue. Kids, but they still just do what they want to do. Why can't they be like we were, perfect in every way? What's the matter with kids today? Kids! I don't mind the moonlight swims. It's the loop-the-loop -loop that hurts. Kids! Why don't they lower the draft age to about 11? Kids! I didn't know what puberty was until I was almost past it. Kids, they are just impossible to control. Kids, with their awful clothes and their rock and roll. Why can't they dance like we did? What's wrong with Sammy K? Hey, Pop, I'm only 10. I don't understand your reference. What? You don't get my... Well, what are they teaching you in these schools today? What's, What's the, the matter, matter with, with kids today? Hello? It's for you, Mr. Peterson. Yeah, yeah, thanks, kid. Oh, come on, Randolph. <clears throat> Hello? Oh. No, unfortunately, I must inform you that we've decided to, uh, let Miss Alvarez go. But I'm sure we can still do business. Uh, excuse me? Uh, I happen to be Albert J. Peterson, and I'm not gonna let no three-cent reporter bull... D Hello? Rose, I... I need you. Sonny, where are you going? Oh, uh, nowheres, Mama. It was just, uh, uh, stuffy in here, and, uh... I thought I'd go outside and just... To, to look for Rose, Mama. I'd love her and I want her back. <laughs> Is that all? By all means, Sonny, go find your lady of Spain. Oh, but first, be sure to stop in the kitchen, take my head out of the oven, and turn off the gas. 
bomb hut. They're nice people. I don't want to run up the bill. Mama, I've had enough of this. If you really loved me, you would go out there and help me find Rose before it's too late. Don't you see what happened? She's gone out to make up for all the years she's wasted on me. And who knows what low dive she could be at at this very moment. Oh, Sonny, you're right. Only I better give you this message from Conrad first. What message? Oh, nothing. Just that he might not be back in time to kiss Kim tomorrow. Well, Mama, why didn't you tell me this before? I tried to, sweetheart, but someone kept bringing up a certain party from south of the border. Mama, I don't know what the problem with that guy is. He knows how much this means to me. Conrad! Uh, Conrad! Take it easy! I'm coming. Before you start hollering, Albert, I just want you to know I made up my mind. I'm tired of getting up at nine in the morning. Whoa. I'm tired of watching, having people watch me when I eat, letting kids poke me in the eye. I want to go out. I want to have some fun. Meet a couple young chicks. Don't you understand, Albert? I'm tense. Uh, well, well wait. <laughs> Mama, don't just sit there. Do something. Conrad, have you ever thought in terms of a more mature woman? I hope I never get that tense. That's all I got. Now look, buddy boy. It's my last free night and before I go into the army, and I am going out. Uh, 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 no, you're not! Uh, you can't leave without my permission. It says so in our contract. Mama, get the contract. It's in my... Uh, never mind. Don't get the contract. I'll get it myself. Uh, but meanwhile, Conrad, sit! Conrad? No! But this is an adult speaking and I already got a... That's not gonna work. <laughs> no, I want you to stay. Conrad? Do whatever you want. There are chicks just ripe for some kissing And I mean to kiss me a few Man, those chicks don't know what they're missing I got a lot of living to do Sizzling steaks all ready for tasting and there's Cadillacs, all shiny and new. Gotta move, cause time is wasting. I've got a lot of living to do. There are men of 19 or 20 who are suave and reckless and true. Play, places to go, people to see Everything for you and me Hey, you kids live around here, don't you? Yes, Mr. Birdie. What's the lowdown on this town? Sweet Apple, Ohio was founded in 1852 by Jeremiah. Uh, I mean, what do you do here? Like, where do you go to have a ball? Oh, there's the church basement, the sweet shop, and the ice house. <laughs> What's there? I don't know. Ice, I guess. Actually, Mr. Birdie, the ice house is a place people go when they want to be alone. Hey, hey, ain't you that chick I'm supposed to kiss? I am not a chick. I am a fully grown woman, and I insist on being treated as such. Now you're talking, chick. Come on, we got things to do. Crazy clothes and motorboat races. Someone, Someone nice to cuddle up to. Broadway lights and wide open spaces. There's such a lot of living to do. Lots of dates and no 
want to scold you. to see everything for you and me oh life's awful if only you know it and it's all just waiting for you you're alive so come on and show it we've got a lot of such a lot of living, what a lot of living to do. Don't you have a home? Randolph, where is your sister? Kim. Kim. Oh, where are you, Kim? Hugo, have you seen Kim? Don't ask me. Ask Conrad Birdie. Conrad Birdie? What are you talking about? They're all together having moonlight swims and motorboat races and loop the loops. <gasps> and I'm going to go do the only sensible thing I know how. Drink myself to death. Hugo, that's a little extreme, don't you think? Ah, stupid kid. Don't know what he's talking about. Never been in love. I'm envious. Moonlight swims. Motorboat races. Loop the loop. loop. Ah! ah! Doris, get my gun. Ah, Mr. McAfee, uh, you haven't happened to see Conrad, have you? No, but I intend to, Mr. <laughs> Peterson. So if you have a message that you'd like me to deliver, I'll be glad to deliver it. Right after I shoot him. Hey, Ray. Shoot him. Oh. Oh, Rosie, I've got to find Rosie. Dear, what are you talking about? You know you don't have a gun. There's the Daisy Air Rifle in the garage. That's mine, Pa. You shut up. I wonder where I can buy BBs this late at night. It doesn't work anyways. They'd get me anything. The, the, the bow and arrow. I got you last Christmas with the suction cup tips. Oh. Don't just stand there. My daughter has went off the loop-the-loop -loop with a friend. Get me a water gun. Oh, these kids, they, they have no stinking freaking loop the loops. <laughs> hey, barkeep, can I get a double uh, rocks on the scotch? Put some rocks in it this time. Ooh, what about a vodka? Malted. Son, how old are you? <clears throat> 32. <laughs> get out. What about a beer? Beat it. Can I at least sit here with an empty glass in front of me? I said, get out. Whoa, hold on, this is an outrage. I demand to see a manager. Where's Maud? Oh, Maud? I'm, I'm Maud. Charles <laughs> F. Maud. And if you're not out of here in about a minute, I'm gonna grab you by the scruff of your neck, throw you out myself. Okay, I'm going. Last time I do my drinking in this place. And hey, don't touch me again. Mommy! this. Double bourbon. Scotch on the side. No ice and put a cherry in it. No. Make that two cherries. And just consider me one of the boys. The name's Pete. Pete? See, si, that's yes in Spanish. I think you've had a little bit too much to drink now. Get out. 
Now, wait a minute. I'm an American citizen, and it is my constitutional right yep. to have oh, a drink hi. here uh, if this I This is choose. Albert J. Peterson. Uh, I'm looking for a Rose Alvarez. Who? A uh, Rose Alvarez. In fact, I think that's choose. here I'm listening this to right now. Could you put her on? And when I say coming out, I mean coming Hold out. Hold the wire. Hey, Pete. Got a Peterson on the line. Wants to talk to you. Tell that little Weasley rat I'm not here! Well, that proves she's there. Who else would know I'm a Weasley little rat? Uh, Rose, you have to help me find Conrad! Furthermore, even if I were this Rose, which I am not, the one thing that would certainly make me hang up is any mention of anybody named Conrad. But, no, Rose, don't hang up. We don't have to talk about Conrad. We can talk about anything. You, me, I, anything. Rose, please. Talk to me, baby, won't you talk to me? I don't care what you say, baby, talk to me. Must you be? Far away from me It seems all wrong this way Talk to me And if you miss me Tell me so Are you lonely? Tell me so Say you love me Tell me so, honey. honey, let me know. Talk to me till I press, till I press you, you close to me. Then you'll see we won't have to talk at all. I don't care what you say Oh baby, talk. talk to me Go on, what can you lose that ain't gonna hurt? And if you miss me you tell them so Are you lonely? Baby, lady, tell him so Say you love me Ooh. Tell me so Ooh, Honey You can go now. I, I don't need you. <laughs> see you later, boys. Well, see you later, boys! Uh, Rose, you have to help me find Conrad! Conrad? So it's not just about you and me. <sighs> That's it! From now on, the sky's the limit! Parties, balls, dances... What's going on in there? Uh, none of your business. That's a private dining room. Private for whom? For men only. That's for whom. Men only? That's exactly what I'm looking for. I've heard what goes on in these small towns. Don't get in my way. Uh, no! Hey! No, hey, no, hey, go hey lady! Where, where are you no. going? No, 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 I'm you coming! You can't go back. Where are you going? Mama! Grab my coat! And 
and I set out. Ow! I'm 32, I swear I just forgot my ID. Whatever. <sighs> Come on. Now, fellas, I know it's sad, but I don't have all night. I've got things to do, places to be. Miss Alvarez, wait. Can I ask you for a favor? Could you go back in there and get me some grain alcohol to go? Not for one million dollars, Hugo. <laughs> but my world's collapsing before me. I can't get a drink and my girls run out with Conrad to the ice house? Came in Conrad? The ice house? We've got to find Albert. Come on. Oh, there it is. Maudside's retreat. Oh, I'm coming, Rose. Hurry, Mama! Sonny, I don't see why we're running around looking for someone. It'd be better not to find in the first place. If you listen to me, Sonny, you'll come home, have a nice hot cup of postum, and go to bed. Mama, I told you I'm not coming home until I find Rosie. Now, if you want to leave, then that's... that's... actually not a bad idea. Why don't you go home, Mama? What was that? Sweetheart, darling. Oh, well, like... Said go home, Mama. Once more, sunshine of my existence! Go home, Mama! I don't need you anymore! So, it's come at last. The day I knew would come at last has come. At last! My sunny boy doesn't need me any longer. Well, what are you waiting for? Throw me out with the garbage, with the used grapefruits and empty cans of tuna fish, and don't bother putting a lid on it. Leave it open so a hundred thousand pussycats can walk all over a mother. Who bronzed your baby shoes? Kissed every little bruise. Who picked your dirty socks up off the floor? Who coughed and who was there? It's just too hard to bear. Cause a mother doesn't matter anymore. With bunions on my feet, I trudge through snow and sleet to bring you licorice from the corner store. I sold my Tiffany lamp so you could go to camp. Now a mother doesn't matter anymore. There, I'm ready to go. And I want you to spend a cent. Fancy funerals are for rich people. Just wrap me in a flag and dump me in the river on Mother's Day. And precious by the way, the doctor called today. When I got a condition, yes, he's sure. There's nothing they can do. Alas, a week or two. Because for a condition, there's no cure. Time you had the croup who made you chicken soup and read you baby till her throat was sore. Sacrifice your life, then bang! You get the knife. Now a mother doesn't matter anymore. There, I feel better now. Everything is as it should be. A mother's lying on top of a sanitation truck headed for the city dump, and her son is running around with the floozy who came looking for a good time and stayed to ruin an American woman's life. But, uh, Mama, where are you going? Hey! Hey! Shut up! Oh. <laughs> I'm having a moment. I don't even need a fourth wall. I... How you doing? Hey, great. You can play now. Gave up nights of rest 
Tropics on your chest Who nursed her sonny boy Till he was born Mama My life has been in vain This country's down the drain Cause a mother doesn't matter, no A mother doesn't matter, yes A mother Mama, are you just about ready to, I don't know, come back on stage? Soaking it in. You're just like your father. You'd marry anything. Uh, good night, Mama. Good night, Sonny Boy. You know, my name is not Sonny Boy. Good night. Albert. <laughs> Mr. Peterson, have you seen Conrad and uh, Kim? Uh, uh, Mr. McAfee, uh, unfortunately I must inform you that Conrad's affairs no longer interest me. In fact, I'm looking for Rose so I can tell her that I... Uh, Conrad and Kim? They run off together! And if we don't find them soon, Mr. Peterson, I intend to call the FBI. Who's the head of it now, dear? Is it Peter Lawford yet? Oh, I'm sure there's nothing to worry about. George, Harry, have you seen Ursula? Ursula? Is she missing too? Yes, since 10, and I've checked everywhere. Have you checked the park? Yes, I've checked everywhere. See, I told you. Uh-huh, sure. Mr. Peterson. Well, I mean... Have you seen my Harvey? Or Roger? Or Phyllis? Or Ursula? Or Carl? Uh, listen, folks, I'm sure there's nothing to be alarmed about. They're, uh, probably just, uh, you know, down at the drugstore, having one of those loop-de-loops. Loop-de-loop? There's that word again. Hey, everybody! Good old Hugo here! Looped! Mm. Mm -hmm. Hugo Peabody, what have you been drinking? Milk. But it worked. Anyhow, I perfect right to be drunk. My girls run off with Conrad to the... <coughs> uh, to the movies! Uh, great double bill tonight. Flying down to Rio and Greed. Oh, I'll never forget that wonderful cast. Dolores Del Rio. And Gene Raymond. What a score! I've forgotten that. <laughs> hey, Rio, flying down to Rio! I'm not so sure the song goes like that. It is how you make it. Albert! Ah, Rose! Uh, I've been looking all over for you. Oh, I have good news for you, Rose. Uh, I did it! I, I sent Mama home. Oh, I'm a new man, Rose, a world leader! Albert, Conrad and Kim have gone to the Ice House. <gasps> the Ice House! The Ice House! Oh, the Ice House! It's the What's the ice house? The ice house? Doris, call the mounted police. Call Mr. Keene, tracer of lost persons. Uh, call the Batman. What about Robin? No, let's go. Uh, That is refreshing. <laughs> of course, I do prefer a maraud, but these'll do. Uh, well, here we are, Conrad, the Ice House. Fun, isn't it? I've been here with just about everyone, you know. Deborah Sue, Ursula, Alice, the Girl Scouts. <coughs> Stronger than the chocolate ones, aren't they? Conrad, you seem a bit nervous. Maybe a drag on the ciggy would relax you. Or maybe one of those stogies I've heard so much about. I can get you a fix if you tell me what it is. Conrad, you're trembling. 
I know it makes you a bit nervous that I'm older than you. I'm 27 or 28, you know, one of those two. So you see, I really know the score. I even know some of the words, like, <gasps> there you are, you sensuous one. We've been looking for you everywhere. Yeah, that's nice. Now, out of the way, I have some place to be. Uh, but you don't understand, we're coming with you. You said it yourself, we got a lot of living to do. Now, wait a minute. Come Moonlight on. swim. Motorboat races. <laughs> of course that stuff ain't as much fun as I made it out to be. We'll never go home again. We'll follow you to the ends of the earth. Let's start right now. Let's have a little fun. Uh, what's going on in here? Conrad! Oh, uh, Conrad? There he is. The depraved brute. Arrest that man. Well, now, what have you got to say, Mr. Birdie? Thank God you've come. Hey, everybody, get all you go again! Hugo, darling! Oh. I'm so glad you're here. I, be I can't begin to tell you what humiliation I've been made to suffer. That's all I need to hear. Take him away. Oh, no, wait a minute, Mr. McAfee. Dust. I demand you release that man. Do you know who what this is? This is Albert J. Peterson. Yes, but... I'm walking with Hugo. <laughs> I'm not gonna leave this spot until Conrad Birdie is brought right here. Look, it's no use, Albert. Why don't you just go back to the house and I'll go down to the courthouse and try talking to the mayor. But Rose, weren't you listening? This is the new Albert. But Albert... Don't but Albert me, Rose. You're merely woman, and, and I'm man. A woman's duties is as follows. You are to take orders and keep the house clean. Oh, and speak only when spake to. And your first order, woman, is for you to have our bags packed and be down at the station at 6.30 on the dot. Furthermore, whether you like it or not, woman, I intend on making you my wife no later than 2,400 hours tomorrow. Oh, and did I mention I loved you? Not yet, Albert. Well, I do. Huh, now what was it? Oh, oh, Conrad! It's gonna be such a wonderful life. I'm gonna be Mrs. Peterson. Mrs. Albert Peterson, Mrs. Phi Beta Kappa Peterson. Oh, Rose, nothing's gonna stop you now. Hello, Rose. Hello, May. Have you a moment to share a heart-to-heart -heart with an old friend? I'll always have a moment to spare for the woman who by tomorrow evening I'll be able to call Don't say it, Rose! I'll be able to call mother. Sweet yams, what an awful thing to hear. Adios, Rosita. Call me Mrs. Peterson. No puedo creer que Sophie está amistando esto me. There is something beginning. A change in me, a new life has begun. All my yesterdays seem far away. I am now aware of who I have become. I stand here naked with emotion, letting go of all the Desperate not to lose this time, but when let love begin. I've made some bad mistakes, but it's a lesson learned. If you never take a chance, you'll never know. I am stronger than I ever knew. I don't have to rush this time, just take it slow. Let the world take notice of this. 
this change that my spirit's been reborn again i was broken by my past but now i'm free i won't be scared of what tomorrow brings it is time for me to spread my wings awakened by the spell so deep within let love begin i want to feel again i want that need again I want to be the place someone calls home I deserve to feel alive this time It feels great to breathe in hope once more With the fire pushing me to live again For I want to know when life gets rough There'll be someone there to lift me up I've lost before, but now it's time I win. I am ready. Come and find me. I am waiting here. Right. It looks like the coast is clear. Uh, come on. <sighs> come on. Now look, Albert. Now I don't even want to hear it. I took all my money I had to bail you out, so I don't even want to see you until we're out of the state. So all aboard. Now wait a minute, buddy boy. You saved my life. And whether you pay me no guarantee or not, you got a contract with me forever. Uh, Conrad, what are you saying? It's a piece of paper I signed my name to. You just fill in whatever you want, Albert. Hello, Sonny Boy. Oh, well, Mama, what are you doing here? Rose, you look good for a change. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Don't worry, Sonny. I know all about you and Miss Alvarez, and I'll act as any parts of the mother would. <laughs> By the time the train passes over me, you'll have two mink stoles. Mama, unless the train hops the tracks, you're not going to get hit in the first place. Now, would you get up? I don't have time for your nonsense. Just get on the train. Just a moment. Mr. Peterson, I demand to know where Mr. Birdie is. He's not in that jail. Oh, how would I know where he is? I haven't seen him since last night. I just came down here to say hello to Rosie. Mr. Peterson. Dear, there was no need to get all excited. I mean, no real harm's been done. Kim and Hugo are back together again. And the sweetest thing happened this morning. He proposed to her, and she said yes! Yeah! Dear, what's wrong? Nothing. I'll just sell the house and move into a home. Ah. Mom, can I have Kim's room? We'll talk about it later, dear! Bye, Conrad! Albert! Don't leave me! Well, here I 
a.m., Albert. 6.30 on the button. Where's the train? Well, it left at 6.25. But you told me to be here at... With Conrad? At 6.30. And Mama? I know, because you wanted us to miss that train. Well, it stands to reason, Rose. Why would we get on a train to New York when we have tickets to... One-way tickets to Pumpkin Falls, Iowa. What's in Pumpkin Falls, Iowa? Well, the teacher's opening. They want somebody to teach domestic science in English. And I hope you brought your wedding shoes, Rose, because they prefer the applicant to be married. Oh, Albert. <laughs> Rose. Did anyone ever tell you that that's the most beautiful name in the world? I was never crazy for flowers. I confess that nothing left me colder. I could watch a daisy for hours And all I'd feel was several hours older Lilacs or lilies, any bloom you please All that they did was make me shrug or sneeze But now I love each blossom that I see For a lovely little rose loves me Now my life is rosy Since I found my rosy With a girl I ain't rosy How could I be blue? Hand in hand will mosey me and little Rosie, we will be so cozy by a fire built for two. Oh, I once heard a poem that goes, a rose is a rose is a rose. Well, I don't agree, take it from me. There's one rose sweeter than any that grows And that's my Rosie I'm so glad you chose me Life is one sweet, beautiful song to me Now my life is Rosie Oh, we'll be happy, I know Since I found my Rosie Off to the creature we'll go With a girl like Rosie So how could we How be could we be blue? Oh, we'll have us a home out west A nice little split level nest And in every room Roses in bloom, but, but there's one rose sweeter than all of the rest, and I'm my rosy. I'm so glad you chose me. Life is one sweet, beautiful song. When love is right, then what could be wrong? Life is one sweet, beautiful song to me.